Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. The hottest spot in the uh, Ukraine war is in Bakhmut at this time. And major developments occur over there. They're all reporting, I know, uh, a lot of articles, but uh, they give you a little bit of information here, a little bit of information there. I made another video a minute ago uh, with some information on what tactics supposedly the Russians are employing right now in Bakhmut. And this is another article that uh, gives you more information with numbers and I didn't want to incorporate this one in the other one, in the other video, because this is a little bit uh, from a different angle. So in uh, the previous, in the previous um, video, I used this article first right here and this is uh, Institute, of St Institute of Study of War Russian forces retain initiative on Bakhmut front line they tell you this I tell you that check the other video the next one was this one Russians switch tactics and keep pressuring Bakhmut over 150 attacks during past 24 days uh, days phew, hours so these are all uh, is all information that is uh, pertinent to the subject it, it it's informative uh, but the article that I saved for this video is totally different and I will start with geography a little bit so we know uh, at least I would like to know in general when I'm talking about a I don't know strategic uh, battle or I want to know the topography to see who's who what's what where you know so I'm gonna start with uh, a little map of where the hostilities are occurring so here is the map of Ukraine Kiev is right here on the left, Bakhmut is right here with Soledar, right here when my mouse circles like crazy, right here. This, uh, I don't know what color is this, guys, uh, pff, I don't know, the brick color. <laughs> this is what the Russians control, this is what the Ukrainians got back through counteroffensive, the yellow, whatever this color is, is very ugly, like mustard. Okay, and Bakhmut and Soledar are right here. Unfortunately, I was not able, and I'm not able to get closer than this to see where they are right here on this. So Donetsk, Luhansk, right, and this is a Donbass right here. Right now we got that one, and this is the article for this video. This uh, article comes from the week, uh, not the week people, but the week as the days of uh, you know seven days. <laughs> Let's see from February first, twenty twenty three. Russian troops are joining Wagner mercenaries in grinding high casualty push for Ukraine's Bakhmut. <laughs> in, in this article, Richard Wagner, a German opera composer, a genius, I must say, uh, is in this article too. <laughs> it was going to appear. Russian conventional forces. I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm struggling with that. Conventional meaning Russian military, Russian army. Where's conventional forces? I don't know. And what's non-conventional? Auxiliaries? What can't you just tell me who's who, what's what? I mean, it would be clearer than me just uh, yapping around here um, and guessing. Russian conventional forces have entered the long, bloody battle for Bakhmut in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region, either replacing or augmenting the Wagner private mercenaries that have been fighting to capture the now ravaged town since July. Now this is a little bit of a lie because the Western uh, media and uh, the Ukrainians told us that Wagner was kicked out by the Russian uh, generals. They said no 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 you're out after uh, Bakhmut, uh, after Soledar and whatever the other one, Bachivnia or something like this. It's a little village uh, east, uh, I'm sorry, west of uh, Soledar. Supposedly the 10,000 Wag Wagner uh, mercenaries were kicked out and now we find out they are together it says either replacing or you know the Wagner okay and I'm quoting again the enemy continues to suffer great losses Ukraine's armed forces said Tuesday reporting they killed 850 Russian soldiers in the previous 24 hours but Ukrainian commanders also say they are struggling to hold Bakhmut amid the waves of charging foot soldiers. Now, this is the same thing that they said in the other articles. Uh, I think trying to um, draw a parallel between this and the Second World War when the Soviet army were just 
marching forward, didn't matter what's going on, they were coming and coming and coming. Uh, when I say coming, I mean walking forward, a charging. <laughs> anyway, so this is what these guys are saying. And remember, are struggling to hold Bakhmut. I interpret that in my, uh, due to my experience with uh, reporting by the, Ru by the Russians, by the Ukrainians, they already lost. But hey, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, right now I'm just using my imagination. But it's just, uh, they're struggling. I think they're done. But we're going to find out in three days. More than 4,100 uh, 4, Wagner soldiers have been killed and another 10,000 wounded, a U.S. official estimated in early January, including that 1,000 dead near Bakhmut from late November to early December. Many of the Wagner frontline troops were recruited from Russian prisons. They have to uh, mention that as, as if it's something uh, criminal somehow. They said, you want to serve for the motherland in this uh, unjust and unprovoked uh, war? And we're going to uh, clean your criminal record if you fight for motherland and Putin. And I said, sure, yeah, why not? How long do I need to uh, pretend I'm fighting? Well, six months. Okay, I'll try to weasel myself around the front line. Okay, basically, this is what they want us to understand the conversation went between Prigozhin and the prisoners. Because those people over there, I don't know, are just, are just you know, not good as we are. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's start quoting. Previously, the assaults were carried out first by convicts. Well, followed by followed by more elite Wagner units, but now airborne units have also joined the, fi the fight. End quote. Maxim Zorin, a former co-commander of Ukraine's Azov regiment, wrote on Telegram. Remember, Azov was brought. Uh, it's not a regiment anymore. There's three regiments actually, actually, and it's uh, uh, from a Azov battalion. It increased to uh, regiment, and then from regiment now it's re three regiments or something like that. And they're fighting in Bakhmut and they all, you know, had a little, uh, how do you call that, uh, whatever, group uh, ejaculation, uh, masturbation, that's what they had. Oh, Azov regiment is coming, oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's see what the hell they're gonna be able to do. Anyway. So I'm quoting again, Wagner's, Wagner's troops are forced to advance on foot. Were you supposed to fly or something, levitate? While Russian paratroopers have armored personnel, carriers and infantry fighting vehicles, he added. That means, oh, I, I, I sensed a little bit of uh, second class here. <laughs> That's what this guy is trying to say, that the Russians are just using the right thing and the Wagner are like dogs. Another difference is, I'm quoting, uh, I guess, yes. I'm yes, it, I'm quoting this weasel again. Another difference is that for some reason, I will tell you probably the reason, regular troops are less willing to die than Wagner men. That is why they act a little more, more cautiously, but they are still dying, just not in such huge numbers. And quote, this guy, I don't know about you guys, but I will tell you that uh, when you're a kid, if you're lucky enough and you have a mother, uh, usually, the mom reads you before you go to bed when you're a kid, a boy, leaves you a story, a, a little, you know, something fictional, you know, like, um, you know, Snow White or something like that, you know, where you, the prince comes, blah, 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 kisses the uh, whatever, the Snow White, the Snow White comes over and everything is good, you know. So if you ever read uh, or been told a story, you know, you find out how, you know, easy it is. I mean, this and that and beautiful and how um, shallow it is. Why? Because it's made for, you know, people, regular people, for children. For This is, this is easy reading. You're saying this guy. This guy is talking like he's telling us a uh, little story before we go to bedtime story. That's what this is it. It, it is. Look at this guy. I mean, he's really, um, how should I put it? An, uh, another difference is that for some reason, regular troops are less willing to die than Wagner men. Okay, 
why, how, what, some reason, whatever. That is why they act a little more cautiously, and then Snow White just woke up after she was French kissed by the prince. But they are still dying. Oh, she's up. She loves him, just not in such huge numbers. His tongue was not that huge, basically. So here is, Jesus Christ, let's move on. Ukraine is suffering heavy losses in Bakhmut too. Oh, cheese oh pits, really? And I'm quoting, manpower is less of a Russian problem, in some ways more of a Ukrainian problem, not only because the casualties are painful, end quote. Lawrence Friedman, oh my God, a professor emeritus of war studies at King's College London, tells the Associated Press, but they're also often Ukraine's best troops. I think that Ukraine's best troops were gone in March last year. Okay, let's put it this way. He added that losing Bakhmut would give Russia a tactical boost, not a decisive victory. Yeah, they will lose it, not the Russians, but the other ones. Bakhmut isn't an imminent danger of falling to Russian forces. I think it is. And I'm quoting, although the Ukrainian command may choose to withdraw. <laughs> They're getting us ready, my friends. Oh, no, no, they will. That isn't an imminent danger. You know, but hey, Ukraine may choose if it if, if it wants to withdraw, then risk unacceptable losses. You know why? Because they are so um, uh, have, they have so much empathy, unlike the other ones. Did you hear? Just push them forward like cattle. This is a very very xenophobic article because it makes us think that the Russians are a different kind of people by this kind of things, and I think that's very xenophobic. Anyway, and I'm quoting again, it is extraordinarily unlikely, extraordinary, that Russian forces will be able to conduct a surprise encirclement of Ukrainian forces in Bakhmut, end quote. I think that's already done and it's floating down the river, uh, face down, I think, all right? And if Russia does take Bakhmut, <laughs> they're getting us ready. They'll get, they'll get a bombed out ghost city, not the... Uh, quaint town of 80,000 known for its parking wines produced in historic underground caves, a, a Associated Press reports. And I'm quoting, it's hell on earth right now, end quote, said Ukrainian soldier Petro Voloshchenko, who has been defending Bakhmut since August. And I'm quoting, Bakhmut is the heart of Ukraine and the future peace of those cities that are no longer under occupation depends on the rhythm with which it beats. I thought it was not that important uh, two paragraphs up, right? It says here, he added that losing Bakhmut would give Russia a tactical boost, not a decisive victory. And now we find out is the heart. So let me uh, say something about that. If you stab the heart, what is the, the rest of the body gonna do? Ew, whoop. But it's not a decisive victory, it's just a boost. So stab it how much you want, you're not gonna get anything. Just a little bit of, huh? I'm telling you, these are bad time stories. Why? Not because necessarily the guy who's telling us the stories is a below 86 IQ, but they know that most people who read these articles, unlike you and I, obviously, who are sophisticated, uh, are that audience. You know, tell me, mommy, a little story. All right. So the Russians, I think the whole thing is done in Bakhmut. I have a, just a gut feeling, and I think I have. I, as a man, I'm entitled. I demand to be allowed to have also gut feelings. All right. So I think I have a gut feeling that Bakhmut is already floating down the river. All right. And uh, someone just stabbed the heart of Ukraine in Bakhmut criminal called Ivan <laughs> or Sergei or maybe Vladimir not Volodymyr but Vladimir Vladimirovich thank you very much for being with me again today stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just stabbed in the heart <laughs>